All right, let us talk about decorators. So actually to my surprise, quite a few people have asked me to make a video about this. Um, really why I was surprised by this is because decorators, most of the time I just never use them. There is a few libraries that I do choose to use them or the library chose to use them and I'm using them because of that but never do I implement my own decorators. I think they're kind of an anti-pattern or kind of a bad code smell in general. If you are writing your own library or writing your own code in general, I think they can be nice to like use and they have a nice user experience sometimes. Um, but in general, I'm not a fan of actually using them to build libraries with or to build code with and like sharing that. Like if someone sent me a pull request and they were like, hey, I implemented this with decorators, what do you think? I would be like, um, can we, what does this look like without decorators? This may be way better without them. Um, and so one library that I use that uses decorators is Type GraphQL. So they use decorators so it looks something like this. You basically use a class and then you annotate the class with these decorators, right? And you basically add information. In my opinion, this is like kind of the extent of what you need to know about decorators to be successful, at least in web development, um, and just in general using them in TypeScript or JavaScript, which is you basically just annotate information. So right here we are annotating this description field. That's really all I see the decorators as is basically adding metadata or uh, options to a field. So for example here we're saying that this is a field and it's nullable. Or here that this entire class is now an object. So basically we're just telling a library some information. We're denoting something with the decorator. And I think that's really the main thing to note and that you can pass objects and parameters into decorators to do options. But note there's really no reason why you have to use decorators for really anything. I think for the most part, there's a counter example where you can build it without decorators. So for example, the counterpart to type GraphQL right now is GraphQL Nexus. Actually, there's a ton of uh, counterparts, but one of them is GraphQL Nexus. And you can see basically this is how we can create objects and types, right? So here they just took away the decorator approach. And I know I'm showing GraphQL Nexus, so you're all going to ask me to make a video about this as well um, coming soon. Um, but yeah, we don't really need decorators to implement things, but they have a nice user interface sometimes, right? So this, this looks a ton easier to read than this, so I can see where decorators um, can be um, advantage that way. But in general, if I'm writing a library, I'm not probably going to opt to go for decorators. And so here's the other example is MobX. So here we can see you can add a decorator to a class like that, uh, or we could wrap this an observer like this, right? So this is basically the equivalence of these two. Um, is This is wrapping it with just a function. This is wrapping it with a uh, decorator. All right, but enough about my opinions about decorators. I thought it'd be good to tell you just a few things about decorators. Uh, the first is what you can actually put them on, right? So you can put decorators on classes, methods, accessors, properties, or parameters. Uh, so this example of putting it on a class, this example of putting it on a parameter, um, I don't know if I have one of a method, uh, but we'll get to that. Actually, I think that there's one down here. This is putting a decorator on a method. Um, so those are all the things you can put it onto. Now, I actually don't know the difference between JavaScript and TypeScript decorators, um, but I assume they probably work just about the same, but this is the TypeScript docs um, that we're getting this from. And I thought we'd do one example because this is one use case that I have done before and I have seen also like in Python I've used this before is it is timing functions. So let's copy this and let's try a little decorator example of creating our own decorator. So here is the TypeScript playground I have up. I'm just going to paste it in here and we're just going to use this for now. Um, so their little example here, what they were showing was that um, how how decorators evaluate is here. Here's a decorator, right? So this is a function, um, and this is a function, and then we can. These are basically decorators we just created, and then we can use them here. Uh, there's one other thing I don't think I, I said yet. Both TypeScript you have to turn on. They're experimental right now, so you have to turn on a setting in your TS Config experimental decorators for them to work. 
Um, but yeah, here you can see us calling the function. So here's where you can actually take in options for your decorator. So this is us creating our own custom decorator, which again, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this in very limited cases, but I recommend it. Um, most of the time I would just say, do like a higher order function or something else instead. Um, but anyway, so you can pass in options here and there, in this case, they're not, uh, but we can see the order of console logs being called here. All right. So we're going to run this. We could see that uh, F is evaluated, then G is evaluated, right? So these outer console logs are called first, and then the inner console logs are going to be called. Uh, I'm not really going to, I don't really want to go over the stacking of two decorators. Let's just focus on one right now. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about with this was how we can kind of affect how the method works. All right, so let's just console.log method called here. And then in here, I'm going to say new C dot method and call my method. All right, let's run that. So we can see it says method called here. But in my G decorator, I can affect how this guy works. So how I can do that is the descriptor has one property that I know of. Um, I don't really actually know too much about decorators and what you use this stuff for. Um, I dove into them a little bit, but then I was like, not worth um, so descriptor.value here is this function. So what that means is I can overwrite the function here, right? So I can just pass in a new function. I can say console.log overwritten. So now um, if we call this, you can see my function here was just overwritten. Um, the other thing we can do is I can just like change what kind of parameter gets passed in here. So. All right, name is a string, pass in Bob here. And here we're gonna say method called, and then we can pass in the name, right? So let's pretend we're not overriding this right now. Can run this, we see Bob, but now I can overwrite this and I can say the descriptor now, we can say, we can store the value of the, of the function here. So we can say the function is equal to descriptor.value. And then we can say descriptor.value is equal to a new function. And what this function does is it passes in a new parameter. So here we're going to overwrite the parameter with um, Jim. Um, and I should use const here. There we go. That's how we assign. That's how we create variables in TypeScript. All right. So we have a function here. And all my function does is it calls the old value of the, de the decorator, or not decorator, the method. Right, so if we run this, this is us overriding what the parameter here is and passing in Jim instead. So here we can grab our name as a string. Right, so we can have name passed in here maybe. So now here I can do pass in Andy, Andy zero. And that is what's displayed here, right? So we can overwrite kind of some of the values of that. Um, and I mentioned timing, so let's do a timing example real quick. All right, we'll get rid of that. So here I'm going to keep the value of the function and I'm going to say all the args and we're just gonna pass them in here. All right, so this is me just uh, keeping all the arguments that the function would take and just passing them to this new function, or sorry, the old function up here. So now what I can wrap this with is I can just say const value is equal to whatever it would return and then I return that. So, oops, uh, with the code that I have here, this is just replicating whatever the method would do. So if I run this, it says Bob there, which is what we expect to get. Now, if we want to, we can add a console.time, and maybe we want to take the name as a parameter here. And let's call it, let's give this a better name. Oops, call it time. And so here, let's, let's turn off my sound. So we have time, it's taking a string as a parameter. And let's pass that into time. And then we can say console.timeend the name. So if you've never seen console.timeend 
console at time end. That's just a way to uh, see the performance or the amount of milliseconds it takes for the statements to run in between these two console logs. So let's see this in action. So I'm going to call this time and method length. Or just call it mo. So we'll run that and we can see mo took 0.25 seconds. If we were to add like a for loop in here, that goes to a big number. Let's see if that increases the time. Yep, we now are up to a millisecond. And again, I can pass in whatever I want the time this to be. So this is C dot method is really the, a good or, or a better name for this. So there you go. So that is just us kind of playing around with decorators. This probably looks really weird. And uh, this is why I don't really use decorators that much. You end up writing code that's pretty weird looking and kind of hard to understand sometimes. Um, but this is how we could write a timing function. We basically copy what the function was and then wrap stuff around it. Um, but there you go. In, in most cases, I would recommend not using decorators yourself if you're building out custom functionality. Um, and usually I only use them if other libraries have them enforced like this. And again, I can see why they do it. I think this is a pretty nice user interface sometimes, especially compared to say this. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with this and I wouldn't mind using this at all. But just from a readability standpoint, I think it's easier to read with decorators.